What is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and today the budget builds are back. I'm going to be putting together a $650 gaming PC build for 2020, running you through all the parts I selected and why, the build process step by step from start to finish before booting this machine up to see exactly how it performs in some of the most popular titles. Let's get straight into it though, after a quick word from today's video sponsor. Opera GX is the brand new browser from, well, Opera, and it's the first browser for gamers, tailored specifically towards the gaming community. With Opera's GX Control, it lets you limit the amount of RAM your browser can use, so you never have to sacrifice any FPS in games while you've got a load of tabs open. Everyone knows Chrome is a monster for RAM, and Opera GX has you covered here. GX Corner is a feature in the browser too which automatically keeps you updated about the latest free games best deals and newest releases so you never miss a beat you can also link up your discord and twitch accounts so you get notifications when your favorite streamers go online they even have their own discord server so take a look and join the fun for loads of contests and giveaways not only that i think the browser's design actually looks really cool with a dark look and feel alongside colorful accents it's got like neon night rider vibes head to the first link in the description below to download it it's completely free and don't worry if you're on mobile you can still click that and you'll get a link to download it easily at a later time and make sure to comment with the hashtag installed GX and let me know what your favorite games are at the minute and I'll be sure to reply back to the build now though and we're gonna kick things off by installing our CPU and our RAM into the motherboard specifically this is the gigabyte b550 M gaming and it's one of the best value b550 boards around right now. I'm going to install our processor by lining the triangle up on our CPU with the triangle on our motherboard socket. We're then going to very gently drop the CPU into place and return the arm back down. It really is as simple as that. Specifically, this is the AMD Ryzen 3 3100 with four cores and eight threads. It's probably the best budget CPU on the market right now. It also comes with this free stock cooler, which if it's brand new, will have thermal paste pre-applied and is easily installed by simply screw in through the holes on each corner of our CPU socket. All we then need to do is plug up the four pin CPU fan to this gray header on the top right corner of the motherboard before we go ahead and install our RAM into place. This is 16 gigabytes of Kingston's HyperX Fury RGB and is a perfect budget RAM option that also looks pretty sick. To install your memory pull back the tabs on each end of the RAM dim slots and find the notch on your memory. Lining this up with the notch on your RAM dim slot and it's super easily, it's gonna clip down into place. Next up then, we're gonna move our motherboard into our case and this is one of my favorite all time, ah, just got shocked. <laughs> one of my favorite all time cases. Specifically, this is the Corsair 275R Airflow and it's a really well built, well ventilated chassis with a tempered glass side panel. Having removed both the front and the rear panels, I'm going to grab this rear IO shield, which comes inside your motherboard's box. This is gonna clip into the back of the chassis, just like so, with your circular audio ports at the bottom of the case. The next step then is to grab this brown box that comes included with the chassis and is home to all the screws and stuff we need to install the motherboard. First things first, we're gonna make sure that under each of the holes uh, through our motherboard, we've got a standoff in the case and I think we just need to add one more in. The standoff looks like this and just needs to pop in here. We're then able to go and slide our motherboard through the rear IO shield and the center standoff is gonna hold it in place while we screw it in. These are the screws we're gonna use and this next bit's pretty easy. Just screw through your motherboard's hole into the standoff. Now that that's done, the next step is to spin our case around once again and remove one of our SSD mounting trays. And we're gonna use this to secure down our storage today which is Kingston's A400 SSD. It's a more budget-oriented drive, but with 500 gigabytes or one terabyte capacities available, it's gonna be a lot quicker than a hard drive and not really cost you much more money. To do this, we're gonna use these screws that come included with our case. 
and line the four screw holes on our drive up with the four screw holes on the mount. This mount is then gonna slide back through the back of the case and secure down with the thumb screw, just like so. Next up then, before we move on to our graphics card, it's time to, to plug some things in. To do that, we first need to install the power supply. And this is a great value 600 watt unit from Aerocool. I think they've rebranded this since, but I'll link everything with the latest availability and pricing in the description below. It's also got fully blacked out cables, which is great for a budget power supply and is gonna look a lot better. We're very simply gonna slide the power supply into the back of the case and use this little bag of screws that comes included in the power supplies box. There we go, lovely stuff. Now we're gonna plug in a couple of our power cables. The first is our fat 24 pin motherboard power connector and that plugs in to the right hand side of the motherboard just like so. Second of all is our eight pin CPU power connector or technically four plus four pins and that's gonna give our CPU plenty of juice. And then finally we've got a SATA connector which is gonna power up our SSD drive. I'm also at this point gonna take a SATA data cable from our motherboard box with one end going to the bottom right of the motherboard and the other end plugging up next to the SATA power cable at the bottom of our SSD drive. The final bit of wiring for today then are our front panel connectors and these make the ports at the top of the case basically work. First up is our HD audio connector and this plugs up to the bottom left of the motherboard. It's got a pin missing so don't force it, it should go in nice and easily. Next up you've got the front panel connectors often referred to as JFP1 and these can be a little bit fiddly but if you get them the wrong way around don't worry I've popped a diagram on your screen now to try and make this as easy as possible. Finally we've also got a USB 3 connector which makes the USB 3 ports work and this can be a little bit delicate so be careful but plugs up on the bottom of the motherboard just next to our front panel connectors. Now that that's all sorted it's finally time to install our graphics card. I know you've all been waiting for this bit including me to be fair <laughs> and this here is MSI's RX 5500X T. It's one of the best budget GPUs around and it's a 1080p beast. Plus this MSI version is, is really, really nice. It even has like a metal back plate which is sick. To install the graphics card, we need to remove the second and third PCIe slot covers before pushing back the clip on the motherboard PCIe slash graphics card slot and sliding the GPU into place. We're then gonna use the same screws we removed our PCIe slot covers with to secure it down. We're then gonna grab a dual six plus two pin GPU power connector and slot this in to our motherboard. That's super duper simple. All that's really left to do then is whack on our case side panels. I'm also gonna chuck in a couple of RGB fans. You can definitely get some cheaper kits than these and I will link options in the description below. Without any further ado though, roll the montage. It can be something Okay then, now you've seen just how to put this system together and how good it looks when it's all powered up, let's dive in and see exactly how it performs. I've tested eight of the most popular titles to give us a really even picture of just how powerful this machine is. GTA 5 is first up at 1080p high settings with some of the render distance bars set to medium, you're looking around 82 frames per second and that's in the game's inbuilt benchmarking mode. So if you want to go back to my older builds and compare those, you can do because you get a really nice repeatable set of results. Overwatch is a similar story. 1080p ultra settings, you're looking at 140 frames per second. That's some esports level frame rates at high visual settings 1080p. The game looks fantastic and is super duper smooth. Call of Duty's Warzone is next up and at 1080p high settings, you're looking around 112 FPS. Not quite as easy to run as Overwatch, but still performs really well. And with no ray tracing support in the Battle Royale mode, you're not losing out here by using an AMD 5500 XT graphics card. CSGO is next up on the list today and while it is definitely an easier title to run, it's super duper popular and I tested it at 1440p 
Do you know, to give it a bit more of a challenge over 1080p, and here at high settings, you're looking in the region of 158, 159 frames per second average. The game looks great, is super duper responsive, and of course, if you wanted over 200 FPS, you could do so by just notching a few of the settings down a touch. Fortnite is another game that's super duper popular. People always ask me for Fortnite, whether I include it or not. And here at 1080p high settings, you're looking around 112 frames per second. Got some decent kills in in Fortnite today as well. It's got that fun factor. It's not quite as good as Warzone. The mechanics aren't quite, you know, as on point, but for a bit of a laugh, you can't go wrong. Apex Legends is another game on my list today and another Battle Royale game. Those titles are so big at the moment. Here at 1080p medium settings, you're looking around 108 frames per second. I think Apex is probably the hardest of the Battle Royale titles today to run, but the game looks fantastic, so there's no complaints from me. I've also got to give a massive thanks to MSI, who sent over this 1440p 165Hz monitor, so I could test the games today at 1080 and 1440p, and this really great budget keyboard and mouse combo, but I'll link everything, as mentioned, before in the description below. To wrap things up, I've thrown my favourite racing game into the mix. It is of course Forza Horizon 4. At 1080p Ultra, you're looking on the underside, you know, just below 100 frames per second, which is fantastic really. Forza Horizon 4 is just such a fun game and also so realistic compared to some of the other racing titles. A little bit more difficult to run, but I think that's a trade-off that I'm willing to take. With that being said though, I think that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. If you did enjoy it you know what to do give it a big old like rating and make sure to get subscribed thank you very much for watching though and we'll see you as always in the next one